What's up, y'all? It's Corwin L. Gilliams, I King Amongst Kings. Just sitting up right here so I can um, get you situated and start giving you a good word. Um, so today, what I wanted to talk about was, um, is actually the importance of knowing who you are, right? Your identity. I've been talking about this for a while now. Um, this is deodorant under here. I've been talking about this for a while um, because it is so important when you don't know who you are, how the world, society, culture um, will influence you knowingly, unknowingly, you know, from even as children, you know, from certain programs, cartoons, certain things. That, and thank God for certain programs that were, were was available for us growing up, you know, that taught us kindness and, and generosity and forgiveness and stuff like that. But there were also things that, you know, that were just, just there, you know what I'm saying, that we, whether it was things directly in our household, you know what I'm saying, or things that um, we were exposed to you know whether it was as a result of our parents or whatever but regardless all these different experiences in our lives um you know causes us to become who we are as an adult and that is just a course of life that is just that's just the course of life for any person birth on this earth and so what um and so that's why you have you know certain neighborhoods or certain areas you know in the world let's say for spe specifically specifically i you know grew up i was birthed in brooklyn right my parents are caribbean and, and south american so i had the blessed opportunity of growing up in the island the island of grenada for about 10 years and that is was a whole different i was i was born in brooklyn right and that experience in the islands was a whole complete different it was completely different from you know, growing up in Flatbush, you know, Brooklyn or whatever. And, um, you know, I, I got to experience both worlds. And although they were both um, two different worlds, the, the concept was the same. The co and the concept is, is that whatever is the dominating factor in a neighborhood, whether it's how you dress, how you speak, you know, cultural, influences I don't ask me how it's created I can tell you what I believe and how I believe certain cult cultural influences are created I believe a lot of them are demonically derived um, and, and a lot of it are, are derived out of sin um, and so you'll notice that the things that are godly and righteous growing up in certain neighborhoods you know if you're someone who wants to be kind or desires to be kind or generous or loving and all these different things you know you'll notice how you're you would be bullied right you'll be ostracized oppressed or made to seem as though you're weak when it's when it actually takes strength and courage to be kind and to be generous around people who have shown themselves to be you know unable to exercise those godly character right godly traits and so what happens is in, in these neighborhoods you know that i've experienced you know when you decide because some of us you know we were you know the 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 the, the, decep the, the deception is that if you're, you know, as a child, if you're growing up and you're kind and you're generous, that, it, that you're weak. But you're actually strong. You're actually strong because when we look at the world, right, we look at, we see racism and different things that are set up to keep certain people away. It is, it's simply out of fear. You know, racism and discrimination and all these different things are complete, are direct result of fear. And so when people are fearful, you know, they'll do certain things to keep, keep, to keep themselves protected. And so that's why you have things like racism, discrimination, and and, also, and, and and what they call systematic racism, and these different things that are set up to keep certain people away, right? Because these quote-unquote people, you know, are seen to be a threat, right? Intimidating or just, you know, just not safe to be around. And so it's no different 
in a small in a smaller capacity or in the beginning stages of childhood when we when some people are bullied because they express the character of God unapologetically you know they're kind they're generous they're loving they're forgiving they don't want to hurt people you know and if you notice those are the ch those are the children they're creative you know what I'm saying um, those are the children who are bullied and, 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 and ostracized right by children who are actually who are actually weak and also children who who and I want you to when I say these words weak I want you to get into the context of it right we know that all children are weak in a sense, but let's talk about the strength in the character, right? The strength of the character and the weakness of the character. Um, it takes a strong person to stand up and be who they are, regardless of the obstacles and, and, the, and the perceptions and the thoughts of people around them. And a lot of these children who are bully, who are bullies, it, 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 if you look into their households and their parents, it's a direct result of what's going on in their household and their parents. But I don't want to get too deep into that. And so part of so, and so we grow up right we grow up being some of us like myself who for from since childhood you know I, you know being different and just being you know the, 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 the child that god created me to be you know i went through a lot of bullying even from family members you know what i'm saying um and being ostracized and oppressed and made to feel you know like i was inferior inadequate you know some people say black sheep i don't like that term because when I read, when I looked at the definition of black sheep, it means you know it doesn't mean black sheep means that it's basically like a curse, like you're a curse on your family. And as we know, people who are bullied or made fun of or or, or deal, dealt with in in an ugly way, they happen to be the the ones who actually they deliver their families out of you know poverty and just open their family to a life. You know that they never thought was possible and that is just the workings of god god when we look at the bible and we look at the davids and the josephs and the and the and you know the moses well let's let's say the uh, josephs and the davids those were people who when you look at the the history and the, the text of their history and where they came from they were not they were at least they were not celebrated by not even their parents you know what i'm saying i think joseph was celebrated by his father you know because he was the, the word says he was the child of the child of his old age so even even him like in joseph you can tell it was from a selfish place it wasn't even from him being anointed or appointed by god it was from a selfish place he was a child of his old age so um you'll notice that parents who have uh, adults who have children at an older age you know they tend to be a lot less aggressive they tend to be more um loving more patient and more kind to those children that they have at a young age but regardless of that um so you know you have a lot of those experiences that you you know from childhood that you grew up with even into adulthood and many many people they suppress it you know what i'm saying um they've they they've become they've learned to function with these wounds from childhood and in their minds they may think that you know that these wounds they no longer exist you know people say okay well i don't think about that no more like that was so long ago but their lifestyles and, and the way they live and how they interact with people and the type of relationships that they have directly directly reflects you know their childhood experiences you can go back to their, ch their experiences as children and see that the wounds has manifested in their relationships or how they carry themselves, how they see themselves, insecurity, you know, fear, all these different things. And so it is so important to, um, it is so important to, you know, be able to, um, so what Christ did for me, right? I'm drinking here, I have um, cayenne pepper, uh, paprika. I was supposed to use cayenne pepper, but I didn't have any, uh, Cayenne pepper in the house. So I use paprika and lemon juice here. And this is kind of like a cleanser. Um, I eat, I try to eat, I'm doing an intermittent, intermittent, intermittent fasting. So, you know, I'm, I'm eating within a certain time frame, and I'm, of course, you know, doing my seeking God and, and my the spiritual aspect of my life. And I've lost a lot of weight. Um, I think I've, I'm the smallest I've been since. The closest to the smallest I've been since high school, 
And so right now, this is just what I've been doing for the past. This is my third day doing this. Um, I'll just drink this throughout the day. Um, and then by like four or five o'clock, I'll have my first meal. And then I'll eat probably till like 12. And then I don't eat anything after that. I don't eat anything in the morning when I wake up or nothing. And if I do eat or drink anything, it's no, like I'll have maybe black coffee or just water or nothing flavorful, nothing with taste or anything like that, nothing savory. But anyways, so as I was saying, with me, you know, someone who was bullied, like severely bullied, you know what I'm saying? I was bullied for my, for my nose, my lips, my head, um, my mannerisms, you know, I was bullied because of how I spoke. There's so many things I was bullied for, bullied for, and not just by strangers and, 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 and people, especially growing up in the islands, you know, they are more... And I don't mean this in a disrespectful in a disrespectful way, but people in the island they're not as cultivated as people here in America. So a lot of the things that they're very limited in. I mean, yes, there's cable and stuff like that, but when it comes to the actual human experience, they're very limited in certain cultural experiences, and so that makes them, you know, sensitive to things that are different. They may not know how to. And maybe this is me being diplomatic, but I have to speak from a place of wisdom and knowledge. And say I could simply say, you know, they're just wicked, wicked, bad mind people, right? But the truth is, is that a lot of the things people do is a direct result of their experiences, right? So, for example, you have, you know, in this world where we have people who, um, who you know, feel like people in this world who may, you know... The, excuse me let's just say the media may say okay perpetuate that you know black men are hyper aggressive hypersexual you know illiterate in incompetent whatever they're jailbirds they don't they, they they really don't do nothing with their lives right that's what the media per perpetuates so someone from india or china or any of those places across the world who may glorify america and think whatever whatever the media in america says is gold right branding right then that's what they're going to receive. So let's say they come up, they come here and they visit and they see a black person who maybe, you know, a stereotypical black man who is, you know, is who we are able to see in, you know, like certain videos or certain music uh, videos and stuff like that. They may be intimidated or afraid because of what they were taught, right? Because of what they received, right? But also at the same time, because of the actual actual experience the actual physical experience and that um may cause them you know to respond a certain way and that's why you can't get offended when you know people respond to you a certain way you have to know who you are but that's going back to the, the identity issues and the and the importance of identity and why this is so important to know who you are so you don't conform to people's expectations of you or become anything or any anyone that um is not you right so um so part of that experience for me, um, you know, growing up, even into going into elementary school, you know, junior high school, high school, I mean, high school was just, I literally like just, I conformed 100%. Like I literally became someone just to be validated, just to, you know, just to be respected, just to fit in. Um, and I was doing well for a long time. I was doing actually, actually, I was doing well in the Caribbean. I came here when I was 13, and I was doing very well in the Caribbean. Um, it was difficult being, you know, smart and, and wanting to do the right thing. People say, well, teacher's pet. I mean, what's a teacher's pet? Wanted to not give the teacher trouble, you know what I'm saying? Wanted to do the right thing, wanted to be the best. Like, why is that a problem? And so these are the things that people try to do to, um, to make you uh, not identify with that, not be your best, right? So if you're bullying someone and say okay you're the teacher's pet or whatever 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 you're, you're you're trying to oppress this person you're trying to say to this person what you're doing even though what you're doing is nothing wrong with what you're doing we can all be great we can all be great you know it's not just one person but it just so happened that one person have the strength and the courage to and 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 most times it's just an an, an innate ability to do well you know what i'm saying that god has blessed his child with that you know people want to try to break or whatever and so i was doing well even in even in the caribbean like i said the caribbean was more um the, the bullying is different in the caribbean because there is a lot more um te you know there's a lot more there's a lot more of structure and and 
focus on obedience where the teachers can actually discipline you you know physically as a child right and so there was this experience of the culture was more like okay you know if your parents is not around then you're not going to get away with murder i also even as your teacher or your neighbor have the authority to discipline you and correct you and it's kind of that mentality of it takes a village to raise a child and that is so and that is very true right um it takes a village to raise a child but first we have to make sure the village is equipped and 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 and, and have love right and as their foundation and understanding and knowledge and not people who are just you know vindictive and want to take things out on you because they don't like you and stuff like that right so we have to be mindful of that but um my experience of being bullied in the, in the caribbean um you know it, it was more of just the physical my the, my physical attributes um and just my personality um they don't they didn't bully me i wasn't bullied because i was smart or anything like that um but it was more of my physical attributes and, and personality and that you know again can make will make anybody you know when you think about this right when we're born as children no one is born a gangster like you may have some children who are more courageous and creative and stuff like that but no one is um no one's born a gangster right no one's born a gangster so you have to begin to understand okay now as we're born we get to, we, we tend to adapt to these habits and these behaviors that we may see from other people or you know we may see um on tv or w whatever and so it is in those times that we need parents or guardians who are willing to train the train the child and train the child in the way that he should go the bible talks about you know we should train the child in the way that he should go and a lot of the issues within our communities when it comes to wayward children and and, and, and children you know becoming um victim of, of crimes or facilitators of crimes is because there is no biblical standard or biblical teaching teachings in the household when it comes to raising a child and so you have parents who are just winging it and doing what they know how they know best and and that and that is the result of it and so but god is faithful right and so what happens is as we grow into adulthood um you know some of us we break out of those mindsets those you know immature mindsets and some of us don't you know some people they don't break out of it they continue into their own adulthood into their jobs you know what i'm saying into the workplace into even their families neighborhoods and they continue this perpetuation of um identities that you know that it's really not them it's not they, it's not them right i don't know how else to say it. it's not them and what christ did for for us i made available for us was what he did is you know he gave us the opportunity to be free you know to live a life based off of someone's expectations of you or perceptions or stereotypes to live that life that is bondage that is slavery right it's not a physical slavery it's not a slavery where you're in chains but it's a it's a mental slavery it's an emotional slavery it's a slave it's a spiritual slavery that um that many live in right myself included at one point right but um you don't know it unless you're broken from it unless you know god breaks you from it unless god says okay um you know you know he wakes you up right and so for me you know i thank god for waking me up you know um and opening my eyes you know to, to what this world is about and you know everything that i thought i was i was not everything people said i was i was not and a lot of the times the things you know being bullied in, as children you know what i'm saying when you're called certain names right when you're called ugly or you're called or you're called gay or you're called um like certain you know names derogatory names that people use names that people use in a derogatory fashion to make you feel insecure these are seeds that are planted in you these are seeds believe it or not that are planted in your soil 
the plant, I'm gonna talk a little uh, louder because of the noise in the background. These are seeds that's planted in your soil as a child and they germinate. They germinate into adulthood. And so that's why you have a lot of people, people talk about, you know, people are born, people are born gay. People are born, you know, uh, no one's born, no one's born gay. No one's born they, gay. They may be born e effeminate. They may be born feminine. They may be born, you know, uh, androgynous, but no one's born gay. Like no child is, is born gay. First of all, no, children don't think about sex. No, no child in, from a, from, in my mind and from, from my knowledge, from a biblical perspective is thinking about sex. It takes certain fallen experiences, right? When I say fallen experiences, I mean like molestation, you know, that child experiencing an encounter, whether it's pornography or something that activates, you know what I'm saying? These activates this uh, experience within the child that causes them to now become curious, right? And be open, right? Open, that innocence is taken. And now that child is open to certain lifestyles and certain things that he should not have been, or he or she should not have been because they should not have been exposed to that. They should have been children, right? Innocent, playing and, and, and learning and loving and being generous and kind and non-sexual. I don't care what uh, psych, uh, psychologists say, you know about certain about children in certain um certain ages like as a child you're not supposed to have none of these experiences you're not supposed to and so that's what happens you know a lot of our, us like myself you know I was, I was someone who uh experienced sexuality at a very young age at eight years old i was having oral, oral sex you know what i'm saying um even before that four or five years old i, I had sexual encounters and so these experiences they stood with me these experiences affected me into adulthood these experiences manifested in in ways that um that caused me to live a life that i didn't even that was not me and the the you know god created us to be very strong courageous people who you know are not easily governed, right? I, one time my name on Instagram was ungovernable being, ungovernable being, ungovernable being. And that just simply means like, only only God only God can govern me. Only God can lead, lead me, governed by one. That was another name of mine, governed by one. Only God can tell me how to live. And so any human being who tells me that it's wrong to do this, like it's wrong to be a homosexual, it's wrong to be gay, it's wrong to be creative, it's wrong to be kind it's wrong to be all these different things you're gonna want to do it because it's like who the hell are you to tell me how to live my life you understand what i'm saying and it's not necessarily that's who saying that's who you are but that is a deception and the craftiness of the enemy to want to have you live a life that dishonors god right dishonors the order and 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 nature and character of god and it is what it is, you know. Um, God is God created order. You understand? When He made man, man and a woman, He made a man and a woman so that they can re be fruitful and to multiply, so that they can flourish the earth and and fill the earth, right? Family, family comes from a man and a woman. When a, a, when a child is birthed, that is a blessing from God. That is a a, a a blessing from God. When animals birth that is a blessing from god when birds birth it's a blessing from god you don't see two females or two males creating life and so that tells you that that is um that is the design of god life is created between a man and a woman you can have you can create what you think life is as a human being you can imitate what you think life is as a human being but you will not get the same favor you will not get the same experiences you will not get the same blessings from imitating and not following the, the ways of God, right? And so, um, a lot of the issues, again, back with the with, with identity, um, and it's, it's important because it's affecting our youth. It's, it's affecting our youth today, and it's really something that, um, if 
you're not willing to break generational curses, right? If you're not, whether it's in your immediate family or in the community or just on a global platform, if you're not, um, if you're not willing to fight, not just for yourself, right? First, we've got to fix ourselves and fix our lives first and our families first before we can help anybody else, right? That's most importantly. But um, if we're willing to, you know, say, okay, you know what? We've got, I've got my household down pat. Now let me go on and take on other territories. Let me ask the Lord to expand my territories and to help other families and to help other people. And, and, and to be honest with you, you don't even have to ask. You know what I'm saying? God just wants you to be someone who is obedient and who follows what he teaches you. You know what I'm saying? And, and he empowers you and, and presents opportunities for you to do the things that glorify him. Right? But, um, yeah, so, you know, identity is so important guys it's so important to know who you are and i'm not gonna um keep this video too long i'm gonna do this do this video in segments so i'm gonna wrap it up with about 30 minutes we're at 26 minutes right now and then i'll continue probably probably later on today or whenever but um so identity is so important and it is image is so important the law talks about we were made we were made in the image and likeness of god when God said, I made you, I, I let us make man in the image, in our image and likeness. God said, I'm making you like God. Like you are many, we are many gods. We, God is the God of all gods. God is the God of all gods, the Lord of all lords, King of all kings. So when he said, I'll make you, let us make man, man in the image and likeness of God. That means we have the capacity to create. We have the capacity to create like God. Limited, right? Because God is God, but limited, but we have the authority, dominion, and the ability to create in this world. And that's why you have some people, if they're not aligned to God, right, aligned to the nature and the character and statutes of God, they'll create evil, right? They'll create evil and wickedness. They'll manifest evil and wickedness. And so we'll see the condition of the world right now and see what is going on, right? We see the wickedness and the evil that's going on. And that's because we've all been given the power and the ability to create. And so if we don't have if we're not connected to our god right whether you're serving the god god of this world who the bible said the god of this world is satan who's the devil an enemy of god or you're serving god right through his son jesus christ right who's our lord and our savior you know we were created to have a, have an overlord we were not we were not created to live life alone right and so what the enemy did was he wanted of course to you know take over you know God's kingdom and, and and be like God and of course that never happened and will never happen and so God said okay you want to do what you want to do because of course God is love and everything works out for the good of those who love God and God is just it's nothing that you can do or we can do that can outsmart God right it's nothing that you can do or I can do that can outsmart God so that's okay go ahead you want to you want to roll I, here's the world do what you do right and so we'll see the conditions of the world. We see the strife, we see the poverty, we see the murder, we see the wickedness, we see some things, the darkness, we see there are some things that go, goes on in this world, believe it or not, that is that is that would that is so horrific that it would just so horrific that you you know it, uh, people don't even talk about it. And and but it is what it is. That's how evil and dark it can get. And God don't want that for us. God wants us to live in his light, live in his character, especially for those he has chosen. Because there's some of us, you know, we we could we'll we'll try to be evil, we could try to be wicked, but it just we will never win because that's just not who we are. You understand what I'm saying? And so God don't want that. God wants us to be hot, hot, hot for Him, not cold. Well, not um lukewarm. You know what I'm saying? Hot, hot, hot for Him. You know what I'm saying? And 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 that's when we thrive. That's when we come into the image and likeness of who He created us to be. That's when we receive the identity Christ made available for us. We are royal priests, chosen for times such as this, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, co-laborers with Jesus Christ. We have the mind of Christ, the Spirit of God who rose Christ from the dead lives within us. All things have passed away. All things have become new. When we're birthed into the kingdom of God, when we are saved and, and delivered by Christ, we are birthed into the kingdom of God. So all things pass away, all characteristics, all ways, all thoughts, all habits, all things, all ways, all lifestyles no longer exist because that was how we lived in the world. But now we're coming into the kingdom of God and, and, and following his standards and his ways and his nature through the spirit that lives within us. We are now able to live a life that is holy and pleasing to God, that glorifies God. God is the holiest of holies. Holy, the word talks about God's holiness being able to kill people. He's so holy that he can kill somebody, right? And so when we come into 
you know what Christ did for us as a, as our eternal high priest he is he's our he's our advocate he's our lawyer he's literally the person who petitions our mistakes and and all the things that the, that makes us anti or enemies of God he continues to work it out for, in our favor so that we can always be in right relationship with God and so we accomplish this by faith in Christ right I'm speaking fast because I'm trying to I'm gonna wrap up we accomplish this by faith in Christ and faith in Christ is not just faith in Christ faith in Christ is reading the word faith in Christ is praying faith in Christ is repentance faith in Christ is humility faith in Christ is saying you know even though my, my flesh and my body wants to do this my spirit knows that my spirit wants my spirit know I know that it's not good for my spirit and because I love God and because I have faith and I know that God loves me and is doing his best for me I'm gonna make a decision right to follow the path of the spirit and not the path of the flesh and so when people talk about the Ten Commandments and all these different things about you know the Old Testament was the Old Testament and the New Testament is the New Testament at the end of the day um it's the, te the, the, the test that the, the Ten Commandments it still applies it is just that we're able to accomplish it not in our own ability we're, we accomplish it through the Spirit of God the Spirit that rose Christ from the dead that lives within us Holy Spirit that is how we're able to live a life that is holy and pleasing to God and, and relinquish and and, 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 and and be removed from the ways that didn't do us any harm that didn't do us any good didn't do our spirit any good when we talk about the ways some of the ways that we that we were you know in a world you know where we were deceptive manipulators manipulative liars um you know just very lustful i mean lustful beyond words right deceptive materialistic superficial um jealous envious you know slanderous fits of anger um drunkards addicts idolaters all, idolaters all these different things we were in a world because it's a dark world it's a fallen world and that's just the character and the nature of people who are in this world but because of god's grace and because of what and who he made available for us we are not able to be delivered and freed from the bondage you know christ is is a guardian is of our souls he's a guardian of our spirits and so he guards us from you know the enemy's tactics the enemies the demons and all these different things that try to keep us down and oppressed and depressed and so that's going to wrap it up for this um part of identity uh it is so important and the, the enemy knows that your identity and your image is important that's why he uses he attacks it at a very young age because by him attacking it at a very young age you're able to use your free will to now come into alignment to what he says as opposed to standing in what uh, who god says you are and if you don't have parents or guardians who are rooted and grounded in the word who are who are obedient themselves to the word of god right and and his ways they're not able to ground you and to keep you or to plant seeds into you you know the word says to train a child up in the way that he should go and he shall not depart from it you know the enemy is going to come and do what he wants to do the world's going to come and do what they want to do uh, we have our own free will. We're gonna do what we want to do, but um, at the end of the day, God's seed will trump. The word of God will trump all experiences, all lies from the enemy at some point in your life. At some point, through all the wayward living, through all the pride, and through all the the, the things and the, and the decisions that you made, you will always be connected to God because His word is in you, and it and it will never leave. And so, uh, yeah. So identity, image, so important, you guys. I'm gonna wrap this up. And I just want to pray before I head out. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity to be used as your vessel, O oh God, to just speak into people who, you know, you are called, you have called to this platform. You know, Lord, you have helped me beyond words to, uh, to overcome so much. And I'm just so grateful that I have the courage and the boldness and, you know, not even being concerned with how it's being delivered, but trusting in your power and trusting that you're able to sprinkle a little supernatural favor on everything that we do as we continue to work for the glory of God and for the proclamation of, of Christ our Lord and what he continues to do for mankind. Even though we were undeserving, Lord, you still continue to make a way and we are so grateful, so grateful beyond words and forgive us, oh God, if we've exercised any type of ungratefulness, oh God, we repent of our sins, Lord. We truly desire to live the way you have designed us to live and we thank you that you've made it so easy Oh God, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have a blessed day today and talk to you soon. Love y'all. Corwin L. Gilliams, I King Amongst Kings.